Hey everyone, in this video I'll go through the different types of questions and I'll try my best to explain the theory behind each question so you can gain a better understanding of how to approach and solve each question without rote learning the steps. Before we delve into the examples, I want to quickly go through some of the important and basic theory that you need to know about solution equilibrium. The first point is that all ionic compounds can precipitate. Even soluble substances like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or even nitrate-based compounds can precipitate when you add excessive amounts of the compound to a given amount of water. Now, in chemistry, we describe compounds as insoluble when the amount that needs to be added to form the precipitate is relatively small. When an ionic compound precipitates, it forms what we call a saturated solution. And in a saturated solution, we have both the ionic compound in a dissolved aqueous form where the ions are dissociated and also the presence of a precipitate that is an undissolved solid form of ionic compound. In the context of equilibrium, this is important to know because when you form a saturated solution for an ionic compound, a dynamic equilibrium would exist between the ions that are dissolved and the undissolved precipitate of the compound. For example, when you add enough of lead iodide to a volume of water to a point where a precipitate is formed, this is what we call a saturated solution of lead iodide. In this solution, the lead iodide solid is in a dynamic equilibrium with the lead iodide ions. And by way of review, a dynamic equilibrium means that the reactant, which is a solid, constantly undergoes forward and reverse reaction with the products, which are the dissolved aqueous ions of lead ions, as well as iodide ions. In this equilibrium, the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. So the total quantity of the precipitate and the dissolved ions will remain constant over time. Example one, calculate the concentrations of barium and hydroxide ions in a saturated solution of barium hydroxide. As we emphasized before, in a saturated solution of an ionic compound, the solid and the dissolved ions will be in a dynamic equilibrium. So we can start the question by writing a chemical equation that represents this dynamic equilibrium. So between the barium hydroxide solid and the dissolved aqueous ions of barium and hydroxide ions. Make sure you know the actual empirical formula of the compound because this will determine the correct ratio between the compound and its dissolved ions. Since the saturated solution is an equilibrium, I can determine the concentration by using the Ksp value, which is the equilibrium constant for this chemical reaction. This is equal to the barium concentration multiplied by the hydroxide concentration squared. We we'll have to put a square here because there's a two as a molar ratio before the hydroxide. And just to recap, we don't include the quantity of the solid in the Ksp expression because concentration does not apply to solids. When you get to this step, before you can calculate the concentration, you need to carefully consider the stoichiometric ratio between the two ions, barium and hydroxide. Now, we don't know what the concentrations are, but we can say that if barium's concentration in the solution is represented by x, then the amount of hydroxide that's present will be 2x. Because every time one lot of barium hydroxide dissolves, you will expect to get the same number of moles of barium and twice the number of moles of hydroxide. So the ratio of hydroxide concentration to the barium concentration is 2 to 1. This means the Ksp, which can be taken from the data sheet for barium hydroxide is 2.55 times 10 to minus 4. This is equal to x for the barium concentration multiplied by 2x squared. So 4x cubed is equal to 2.55 times 10 to the power of minus 4. And by solving x, we can find the barium concentration. x here equals to 0.0399 mole per liter. Now previously, I have defined x as my barium concentration. So the concentration of barium ion is the same number here. 0.0399 mole per liter. And we also said that the concentration of hydroxide is 2x, so twice the amount of barium. So this is 0.0399 times by 2, which gives us 0.0799 mole per liter. 
Now for both of these numbers, we need to consider how many significant figures to leave them in. Because the only number I've used in my calculation is the KSP value, which is supplied as three significant figures, 2.55 by the data sheet, I'll leave both my concentrations here as three significant figures. All right, example two. Calculate the maximum mass of sodium hydroxide that can be added to 250 ml of 0.1 mol per liter of barium nitrate solution before a precipitate is formed. Now, previously, we said that when a precipitate of an ionic compound is formed, that's when a solution reaches an equilibrium. This is asking what is the maximum amount of sodium hydroxide that can be added before a precipitate is formed. So this also means before an equilibrium is established. For this type of question, the first thing you need to do is to identify what is the potential precipitate here. Sodium hydroxide and barium nitrate are both quite soluble as sodium and nitrate are containing compounds usually have a quite high solubility. However, when you mix the two compounds together, the combination of hydroxide ion and barium ion can potentially form barium hydroxide. And if this forms a precipitate, it will undergo a reversible reaction and to form an equilibrium with the barium and hydroxide ions, as we saw in the previous question. In the previous question, we also said that the KSP value is equal to the amount of barium ion concentration multiplied by the hydroxide concentration squared. Now, in this example, the maximum concentration of barium hydroxide before a precipitate is formed is also the maximum concentration these ions can have. The barium concentration in this example is already fixed as 0.1 mol per liter due to the presence of the barium nitrate solution. So as we add increasing amounts of hydroxide from the sodium hydroxide, eventually we'll get to a point where the concentration of these two ions were multiplied together in such a way exceeds the KSP value causing a precipitate to be formed and therefore an equilibrium to be established. So the maximum amount is really just asking for what is the equilibrium concentration of the hydroxide in this instance when the barium concentration is fixed as 0.1 mol per liter. So we can use the KSP value of 2.55 times 10 to minus 4 equals to the barium concentration of 0.1 multiplied by the hydroxide concentration. So effectively, I am trying to work out what is the maximum hydroxide concentration that I can achieve before I form a precipitate. This gives me a hydroxide concentration of 0.0505 mol per liter. This is the maximum concentration. If the hydroxide concentration goes any higher than this value, then you will expect barium hydroxide to start precipitating. To find the maximum mass of sodium hydroxide associated with this hydroxide concentration, we must first find the moles of hydroxide ion by multiplying this concentration by the volume of the solution. The concentration is 0.0505 and the volume of this example is fixed at 0.25 liters as we're adding a solid to a solution of 250 mils, which is 0.0126 moles of hydroxide. And since when sodium hydroxide dissociates, it forms the same number of moles of hydroxide ion, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the moles of sodium hydroxide is also 0.0126 moles. And finally, we can find the mass of sodium hydroxide by multiplying this number by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So sodium is 22.99, oxygen 16, plus hydrogen, which is 1.008. This gives a mass of 0 0.505 grams, and I'll leave this in three significant figures. Example three, determine whether a precipitate will be formed when 250 mL of 0.15 mole of sodium hydroxide is mixed with 250 ml of 0.08 mol per liter of barium nitrate at 25 degrees. Show relevant calculations. The difference between this example and example one is that in this example, we don't know if a precipitate will be formed. The first step to this question is to identify what is a potential precipitate. 
Again, sodium hydroxide and barium nitrate are both very soluble due to the presence of sodium and nitrate ions. So it is actually the combination of hydroxide and barium ion to potentially form barium hydroxide that will be the precipitate. So we can write barium hydroxide solid in equilibrium with barium and hydroxide ion. Now, of course, we have to keep in mind, we don't know if barium hydroxide will actually precipitate. This reaction, which is an equilibrium, will only be one if we have a saturated solution whereby there is barium hydroxide precipitate. To find whether this will precipitate, we can find the theoretical concentration of barium and hydroxide ions when the two solutions here are mixed together. If the number of this expression were multiplied, is greater than my KSP value for barium hydroxide, then I can show that the concentrations are way too much. You've caused the solution to become saturated. This is because when the concentrations here is equal to the KSP, that will be the maximum concentration you can have before you form a precipitate. So when you multiply them together and you get a number that's bigger than KSP, doesn't matter how much bigger, you will form a barium hydroxide precipitate. Now, this term here, because you're multiplying the concentration of the ion together to find the product, this is known as the QSP, which is also known as the ionic product. So if we can show that the QSP is greater than the KSP, then we know that there's gonna be a precipitate. However, if the QSP is less or equal to the KSP, then we show that the solution has not yet precipitated, so there will be no precipitate of barium hydroxide. So now let's find the barium concentration. The barium concentration is equal to its moles divided by the volume. The moles is given by the concentration of barium nitrates, so 0.08, multiplied by the volume of the solution, 0.25. And then now I have to divide it by the final volume when you mix the two solutions together, that will be 250 mils added to 250 mils, which will be 0.5 liters. This gives me 0.04 mole per liter. Similarly, for hydroxide concentration, I can also divide the moles by the volume. The moles of hydroxide is given by the concentration of sodium hydroxide multiplied by the volume divided by the same final volume of 0.5 liters. This is given as 0.075 mole per liter. So now the QSP, which is the ionic product, is equal to the barium concentration multiplied by the hydroxide concentration squared. This gives me 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4, which is slightly less than the KSP value of 2.55 times 10 to the minus 4. So this means barium hydroxide precipitate will not form as the QSP is less than the KSP value of the compound. Okay, let's go through example four. Some amount of solid barium sulfate is added to 200 milliliters of one mole per liter sodium sulfate at 25 degrees. Calculate the solubility of barium sulfate in this solution. For this example, it's important to understand that we already have a solution of sodium sulfate in a beaker and sodium sulfate is a very soluble compound so you expect the one mole per liter to be completely soluble so you have twice the amount of sodium as the amount of sulfate then we're going to add some amount of barium sulfate solid when you're adding a sparingly soluble compound like barium sulfate to a much more soluble compound of sodium sulfate this is where the common ion effect will occur. It's called a common ion effect because both the barium sulfate and the sodium sulfate share the common ion of sulfate. Normally, when barium sulfate is by itself and it dissolves to form an equilibrium, you will get barium and sulfate ions. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still gonna happen in this instance, but the only difference is that when we are writing the KSP expression, we gotta be mindful that the barium concentration will come from the barium sulfate because that's the only compound here that has barium ions in it. However, the sulfate concentration will be determined by not only the barium sulfate that will dissolve, 
but also the amount of sodium sulfate that was already dissolved in the solution. So the KSP barium sulfate is 1.08 times 10 to minus 10. Now the question is asking us to calculate the solubility of barium sulfate. Remember that in this equation, because barium comes from barium sulfate only, that the concentration of barium ion will be equal to the solubility of barium sulfate. For example, if one mole per liter of barium sulfate dissolves, you'll get one mole per liter of barium ion. So I can also call the barium concentration here as S to represent the solubility of barium sulfate. For the sulfate concentration, normally you will also write S here, if the barium sulfate was the only compound that's in the solution. But here we have to write S plus one mole per liter, because remember, both the barium sulfate as well as the sodium sulfate will contribute to the concentration of the sulfate. The S will come from the barium sulfate and the one mole per liter will come from the sodium sulfate. Once you understand this step, we'll then proceed to make a simplifying assumption. We are going to assume that the value of S is negligible, which means that it's very, very small compared to the number one. This is because S, which represents the solubility of barium sulfate, will be quite small compared to the solubility of one mole per liter of sodium sulfate. Whatever this number for S is, whether you add it or not to number one, it will make a negligible difference to your final answer. This assumption is useful because it allows me to simplify my expression into just S times by one. So the solubility of barium sulfate will then just be 1.08 times 10 to minus 10 mole per liter. Again, I'll leave my final answer here as just three significant figures. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.